Hi, welcome to NXU Virtual Meetup Philippines Edition. My name is Trisha Roque. I am the Learner Success Manager um, of NXU, and I'm very happy to welcome you to I think um, the second the second virtual meetup that we have for 2021 here in the Philippines. And I'm very happy to know and to announce that you know uh, this is getting more frequent. Right, and we will be engaging more with every one of you, and we're very happy to see you here. So, right now in this call, we have current learners with us, MBAs, BBAs, and even single course learners. We also have um, prospect learners who are very interested to join our next word university. So, welcome everybody. And you know, I know that while you were signing up, you've seen a lot of our ads, you know, in your social media, and I'm sure you've heard, you've heard the phrase. Uh, next generation um, learning experience. And today I'm going to um, talk about NXU so you'd know and see a glimpse of what this next, for, uh, next generation learning experience is about. So before I head on to that, I'm going to um, uh, introduce to you uh, our guest and uh, right uh, for today. So for now, we have a support group for us it is um, Jamie. She is our lead success advisor. Jamie, would you mind saying hello to everybody? Hi, everyone. Thank you for attending this webinar. We're very happy to meet everyone. I am Jamie, and I am a lead success advisor as a part of the learner success team. So as uh, from the term itself, we are the ones that learners run to or go to whenever they have any types of problem, whether that would be personal or academic related, our team will always be there to help. So I hope someday we can be you can be a part of us. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. And also to help us talk about this next uh, generation learning experience, we've invited um, current learners as well. So first, let me introduce you to Melanie Velostrino. She is uh, in the MBA program. She's already completed um, five, six courses with straight A's, right? So he's a, he, this is a learner who's already succeeding in online learning. So Lani, would you mind um, introducing yourself? Hi everyone, I'm Lani Pilosin and I have been taking this MBA for I think since August 20 and um, for my work I'm working in real estate and I'm a finance business partner so this one is really helpful for me because it helps me manage the business and thrive through in this like economic challenge for all of us which is the COVID-19. Yep so um, Thank you when so I much. started it's really hard but I just asked one of the alumni from LinkedIn. So if you have any question, you can just feel free to add me up on LinkedIn and I'll discuss with you. Thank you, Lani. Yeah, you can look her up. You know, her name is Melani Velostrino. Just add her. I really encourage everyone. This is why we're here in the meetup so that we can um, widen our network and get to know other professionals with the same interests as we have. Okay, and then next we have Zyril. Zyril is also in the MBA program and has been um, with NXU and he has been um, completing his courses with flying, co uh, flying callers just like Melanie and another successful online learner. So Zyril, would you mind introducing yourself? Hello everyone, I'm Zyril Tan. I've been with Nextford since April 2020 and uh, a, a licensed dentist who decided to enroll with the MBA course since it was that time when there was a pandemic and I couldn't uh, work. Okay. okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Zyril. And yeah, so um, there's so many um, benefits that uh, NXU has given to a lot of our learners, especially this pandemic. So you know what, since you've already met our um, guest speakers for today, let me introduce um, Nextford to you very quickly. So um, I've been talking about this Nextford learning generation, uh, next gener generation learning experience. So I just want to let you know how we've actually arrived to this type of uh, and how we were able to build this um, uh, type of university. And this is because um, we've done our research. So we've spoken to more than 5,600 students worldwide to really understand what learners need in a classroom environment, in an online environment, and understand what are the skills that they need to succeed 
in the workforce. And apart from speaking with actual learners, we've analyzed more than 30 million job vacancies. We did this to understand what are the um, uh, in-demand workforce or job vacancies that are available for our learners in the future and to understand what type of skills they need or employers are looking for uh, in students or in graduates. And we've surveyed different industry leaders as you can see in the logos below, those are just samples of the industry leaders that we've actually surveyed just to understand um, the gap between the skills that uh, employers are looking for and the skills that um, our university would hone to our learners. And you'll know um, from Lani and Zaire later how practical most of our courses are. So it's just, uh, and it's because of this um, data and th this research that we've done. And um, what, what makes Next for different are these three factors. So first, we are globally affordable. And by globally affordable, you might be thinking, okay, Next for University is an American university, so you might think that we have very high fees, right? But, um, but that's not really true. So though we, cha we charge our tuition fee in dollars, you actually pay in the local market value in peso and you do it on a, a monthly basis. So you pay per month, not per unit. And I know most of us here in the Philippines, we're very um, familiar with paying per unit. So uh, it's not going to be the case here in Expert University. So just think of um, the payment model like Netflix. You pay for a monthly uh, monthly. Um, Tea, but you get access to so many Korean dramas, so many American series, but you just pay for a monthly unit. And that's the same for Next World University. You pay for one month, but you can access, you know, one, two, three, four courses, as long as you're eligible academically, right? Uh, so this means that um, the cost of your education actually depends on your pace. And not your um, and not what is required of the university. It's not dictated by the number of units that you are taking. It means that you can actually um, place the financial planning on your hands, not like in different universities that you have to depend on the number of units you're taking. But here you can actually depend uh, your plans on your own pace. So if you feel that okay, I'm just going to um, I'm just going to a lot, um, this, let's say $1,000 just for this education. Well, actually, that's really too much. Even 500 is enough, right? So if you, um, uh, if you allot $500 just for this program, entire MBA program, and you just have to plan on how many months you're going to take it, and that's going to be enough. So you dictate how much you're actually going to pay based on your own pay. And that's what makes us globally affordable. And next is uh, we are workplace aligned. Just like what I mentioned earlier, we did our research. We wanted to understand what the workforce really demands so that that's something, uh, those are the skills and competencies we're going to form in our learners. So uh, all of our courses are suitable for upskilling. And just like what Zyril did, you know, um, he's having trouble with um, the industry that he's in because of the pandemic. He tried to upskill. Right, he tried to upskill himself using the courses that we have, and it's been very useful for him. And I would say, so um, if if you're looking for uh, a way to compete in this um, very competitive job market that we currently have, especially because of the pandemic, um, our courses are workplace aligned. It will definitely help you bridge the gap between whatever the employer needs and the skills that you currently have. So we have a lot of learners actually taking um, MBA programs so that they can climb the corporate ladder. And we've had a lot of alumni who has actually um, um, succeeded in doing that. I have known a lot of my advisees who have been promoted to from manager to director or from being um, uh, to a manager themselves, right, a supervisor. And then next we have um, personalized support. So personalized support is something that we're very happy that we have for our learners, especially since we are an online university that is um, available for in any uh, in any country. So it means that if if you are a night owl, right, you study at night and suddenly you you um, you have a technical problem or you don't understand your assignment, someone's there to to answer your question. 
Okay? Or if you study very early in the morning, someone's there. You study while you're at work, someone's going to be there to answer your question. Okay? So uh, everyone can just email, chat, or call our team at any time of the day so that, you know what, um, we wanted to make sure that we, um, we tackle or actually we get rid of the concept of being alone in an online learning environment. So you'll always have someone to talk to. And we're not robots. There, there will be human beings talking to you, advising you, um, mentoring you, and consult, um, uh, giving you advice as well. And then next is, um, what do you get with a next for a degree? So the best thing about Nextford is that um, we offer uh, what we call stackable credentials. So for example, um, if you are in the MBA program, you won't just get an MBA degree certificate. You, don't, you won't just get one diploma. You will get um, different certificates um, by earning the courses that you have actually completed. So for example, like Cyril mentioned, he is actually in the dentistry field, right? And then he jumped to a business degree. So um, we have a lot of learners who are in the same place, place as him. So we have what we call foundation courses. So foundation courses are the first four courses that uh, in the MBA program that uh, learners with non-business degrees or non-business backgrounds can take. So for Zyril, he's already completed all these first four courses. And with that, Zyril already receives, will already receive a certificate. So that's what we call the business fundamental certificate. And then that's already one certificate. And then he is going to complete two more courses that is a bundle or three or four more courses that is a bundle of another certificate. Then that means he will get another certificate. So it means you don't have to wait until the end of your program or the end of your program to actually get a credential. So while you are in the program, you earn certificates, you earn credentials that you can add in your CV. You can promote it in your LinkedIn profiles. We have a lot of badges that you can promote. So this shows that while you are in the MBA program, you are continually getting competencies that um, employers are looking for. So you don't have to wait to brag about, you know, hey, I'm doing an MBA program because you already, you already have a certificate to show. Okay, so, well, you know what? Um, enough about all of this technical matters because I really want to interact with all of you now. So before we um, let our guests talk about um, their experience, um, let's just play, you know, a quick, a quick trivia game so that we can um, get to know all of you. Right. So um, Jamie will be the one to actually monitor the your answers. So what we're going to play is a very quick is what we call where in the Philippines is. So we're with the mechanics of the game is this. Uh, we're going to show a picture and then what you're going to do is type in your answer. So Jamie will be the one to monitor this and see if anyone has answered it correctly. And um, anyone who participates, of course, you will get a um, um, you will get a prize. And of course, we will be um, delivering it to you. You don't have to go to our office. We'll be delivering it to you. So you know, I really hope that all of you would participate. So let's just um, for this first picture, um, it's just going to be a picture. I won't say where it. I won't say what. Uh, what type of place it is. So it's just a plain picture. So you have to give us um, the exact location. So it just it doesn't have it. Uh, it should be um, the actual um, place with the city and the town. So for example, this one. So this is a picture of the embassy of the United States of America. So this is here in the Philippines, right? So you'd have to guess where it is. So there. So we have to include Ermita, Manila, Right. Uh, for example, um, BGC, Tagig, um, Kainta, Rizal. So it has to be in that form. Okay. But anyway, you know, before we start, does any one of you have been to the Embassy of the USA? Any of you, Lani, Jamie, been there? Just across I've only the been building. There. Um, just I've been the there to attend the webinar. Building, but... uh -huh. Oh, a webinar. Okay. <laughs> well, that's good. At least someone, some of us have been here. Okay, 
So um, we have the Q&A portion actually here that you can uh, actually, um, you can type it in the chat box. So Jamie will be seeing that. And you know what, Zyril, Lani, um, if you know the answer, you know, you can just also say it, but let's wait for everyone. Let's give everyone a turn, okay? So let's uh, start. Okay, so this is fairly easy. Uh, it's going to be a very um, easy answer for everybody. It's a quick prize, you know, you get um, NXU merch, you get certain um, certificates. You have to so be I more specific. For this mm -hmm. Someone is actually yes. typed in Albai. Can we be more specific? Albai, okay. Oh, okay. More specific than that. And we have Legaspi Albai from Christian. That's Christian. Okay. Uh, okay, correct. Correct, Christian. So this is the Mayon, Mayon Volcano. It's in Legaspi Albay. So Jamie, please take note of Christian. Okay. We'll connect with you um, right away. And the next, we have this. Any one of you has been here? Zyril, have you been here? You think it's familiar for you? <laughs> um, we have yeah, from I think Renee, I've been here. Renee Rose. <laughs> Yes, we have been there. We have from Renee Rose. Okay, what's uh, her specific answer? BGC Tagig. And then we have from Norman, that's McKinley uh, Tagig. No, not exactly. <laughs> from Norman, Aloba, we yes, have McKinley, McKinley Tagig. Tagig. Yes, so this is the okay, Venice Grand Canal good. Mall in McKinley Hill, Tagig City. So anyone's been here, I know right now it's sort of like a ghost town because of the pandemic. <laughs> but uh, how about you guys, uh, Melanie, Jamie, any of the ones in the audience have ever been outside uh, to malls since, since this pandemic? Since the only the pandemic, time that they haven't I've been there. there. She has yeah, been, been there, there Lani. <laughs> How about you, Jamie? Sure, we've, we've been there last December, the, only for the uh, the dinner that we had. That's the only time that I've been there for the past year. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, I remember because, you know, the NXU staff, we had our sort of um, year-end dinner party here. Okay, but yeah, let's go to the next one. I think it's a bit more difficult for this one. I think uh, the ones who are very... very uh, uh, who really likes traveling would be able to answer this one. So maybe let me just give you a hint. It's uh, it's it's a place where um, usually people go for weddings, for photo shoots. Uh, it's some place that uh, you can actually stay in for the night. Um, any guesses from anyone? Nope. <laughs> Yeah, I no was I was uh, anticipating yeah. that this would be a bit difficult oh, for people. We have one Trisha from Renee Roan Cruz Bagak Bataan. Is that correct? Yes, correct. That is in Bagak Bataan. This is Las Casas Filipinas de Acuzar. So you know what? Anyone here is interested, you know, for a quick photo shoot, it's really good. You just go here. Yeah, the next one is very easy. No, I was thinking that, that I was thinking that this was the, uh, the easiest one. Okay, I think we have an answer. Sagada Ifugao from Jethro Tukai. We have been get only from Norman. Let's still wait for the others. Yes. Sagada Mountain Province from Rene. Okay, so I, I think Renee is on a roll. Oh. So, <laughs> so the, right, so this is the hanging coffins in Sagada Mountain, Mountain Province. Okay. okay, anyone who's been here? Have you been here, Zyril, Lani? Yep, I've been there. You have? It's yeah. really interesting, right? And um, yeah. it's a very solemn place. So um, we don't act, you don't actually allow to, you know, touch the area or even... Um, be noisy because it's a sacred place so it's a really good place and you know what I'm um, looking back looking at this picture really uh, makes me you know miss you know going outside because of this pandemic so at least you know through this um, meetup we can get to see other places okay so I think this is the last one that we have um, okay any guesses <laughs> I 
Anyone? Can do it, guys. Nope. <laughs> Someone uh, typed in okay, Kalyarwega, but it's not Kalyarwega. Um, yeah. From no. Jethrom, uh, Lawag Ilocos Norte. Jasper um, Ilocos Norte. What <laughs> working? <laughs> no. No more. So this is the Bantay Bell Tower. So we just have to know where Bantay Bell Tower is. Bantay Ilocos Sur Province. Yes. It's from Kasmir. <laughs> right. The word is in the uh, actual name of the place. So yes, that's right. This is in Ilocos Sur, not North. Okay. So Jamie has already taken note of all of mm -hmm. those who won um, uh, NXU merch. So we'll be sending those to you. Congratulations. And I Congratulations. hope you, know, you wear them very proudly. Uh, you use them very proudly and, you know, uh, just feel free to tag us. We really want to build, you know, connections and community with you guys. So thank you so much for participating. So now um, I know you're all very curious to know um, about Lani and Zyril's experience because um, it's really more helpful to learn about a certain, um, an experience uh, in a university from actual learners. So for now, I'm going to start with um, Zyril. Uh, he's going to share with us how um, his uh, experiences on how he finds the lessons, how he was able to meet um, assignment deadlines, and his um, candid feedback about our um, faculty support or other support of the university. So, Zyril, uh, maybe let's start with how you find the lessons. Mm, as coming from a dental school, um, all of the lessons are new to me too. But the lessons are broken down that the students can easily understand it for. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, just to piggyback on what Zyril mentioned, yes, everything is broken down into different modules so that you won't, you won't be overwhelmed with information. So you only get um, weekly deadlines and well, actually not even weekly. So you get some, uh, there are intervals of one week. So there's really enough time for everybody to uh, um, do their work. And how about, you know, how, how are you able to meet your assignment deadlines? Would you mind sharing tips to mm -hmm. current learners here or interested learners on how they'd be able to handle the demands of the um, courses? Uh, my style is that I always read the assignments or activities first. Tapos, I, after that, I take my time reading the module and then try to find other resources related to the topic being discussed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, thank you so much, Zyra. And I think it's a very common strategy that a lot of our learners do. And before the pandemic started, um, our learners actually, what they do is while they are on commute, because, you know, commute in the Philippines, it takes like two, three hours already. So what they do is during the commute, they read the articles, they watch the videos, so that, you know what, um, that's what they do on a, a daily basis uh, on the weekdays. And then on the weekend, they focus on doing the assignments, right? So, um, and that's uh, also a strategy that you can actually use. And then, you know what, finally, Zyril, um, how do you find, uh, what is your feedback on the support that you're getting from the faculty? Um, I really love the support from the success advisors and from the professors. Uh, they'll immediately address concerns and questions and also push you to succeed. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, uh, you know, just to give everyone an idea about this, um, the success advisors are there to guide you to ensure that you have, uh, you will reach your academic goals. So we are the ones like, uh, like, for example, Jamie, she's our lead success advisor. You'll, if, if you, uh, if Jamie is your advisor, you will be receiving messages from her reminding you about your assignment deadline or telling you that, hey, you know what, you, you missed this deadline. Uh, here's what we can do so that you can boost your grade. Or you can, she, she can say that, hey, I've noticed that you've been having a, a, running, a low running grade. Is there a problem? Uh, here's how we can help you. So because we want to be very proactive because you know what, in traditional universities, you only get to meet your guidance counselors when you've already failed your course, right? 
and that's that's very different here in Oxford University. So we want to meet you um, halfway there. You know, we want to meet you before you even go there, so that we can prevent that from happening. So you really have someone to work with you, and that as that um, that concept of being alone in an online university doesn't actually, I would say, exist in NXU because you have, you know, someone will actually reach out to you and try to understand and help you go through your courses. Okay. And um, so I know we have some current learners here. Um, let me ask you guys, like in one word, how would you describe um, the assignments that you, uh, uh, you usually get? You know, in just one word, is it hard, technical, or, you know, challenging? You know, we just really want to hear from you, from, from those um, current learners. And, uh, you know, just to give um, even the interested learners that we have here right now an idea on, you know, what, what they can expect. You know, and how about you, Melanie? You know, in, in just one word, how would you describe, you know, the assignments that you get? Um... In my case, it's challenging, especially mm -hmm. some of the courses. I'm not really familiar, especially with the technology one, but according to Cyril, professors are really helpful and there are a lot of links that you can read through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just like uh, what Lani mentioned, there are a lot of things that you can read through if you're not, um, if you're not uh, familiar or if you're unsure of uh, how you do an assignment. Uh, each courses have um, assignment examples. So you can actually check um, previous work from different um, uh, previous works just so you can um, you, you can check or cross check if what you're doing is correct so you won't really be lost okay? so for now um, let's move on to um, Lani so Lani really want to hear from you about your experience when it comes to navigating the learning platform so would you mind you know telling us how was your experience navigating through the platform and how are you able to adjust to online learning? Mm, okay, so for the next word learning environment, first I I'm really lost about it because um there are a lot of things that I don't know, but I just got myself familiar familiar with it, so I could work on it. And then it also has everything you need for me to survive this course. So it has the calendar that shows you the to-do list so you don't get lost on your um, time frame for the course. It shows you the uh, subjects that you have and then also the subjects that you have enrolled, uh, completed. And then it has discussion boards that you can um, communicate with your professors and your peers. It, holds, it also has like an in-system integrated mailing box. So just like our normal Google Mail that it has an inbox and then sent items whenever you want um, communication with your professors documented. Because sometimes you want to look back to what you discussed so you can track it there. And then another, another thing there is alternatively, you can use the like chat function. So you'll see who among your peers and your professors are online and then You'll go to their account and then you chat them, especially if you know that some of your peers are from the same class. And if you have an understanding going through the subject or you have a difficulty with the assignments, you can always ask them. And everyone is really helpful, especially the professors, just like what Zairio said. They are um, supporting and accommodating with the um, challenges that you have. And um, so first, for this learning environment, so I'm lost, so mm -hmm. I always go back, I'll click this and I'll go back to home button. So, <laughs> but like what I said, you have to get yourself familiar and you have the success advisors to help you. So whenever you have any difficulties and there's also an orientation, but in my case, I had to read through the orientation module for five times to get myself familiar with everything, like for the grading of the subject, what happens if I fail or how do I get into this program, like accelerated program, what grades do I need? And then everything is stated there. So it's just me reading through and reading through. So um, how am I able to adjust to online learning? Um, I think it's um, first pretty challenging for me because everything you have to do everything in online. You have to communicate, you have to send emails to a lot of people to, for your different inquiries, like especially first for me. My first email is about the billing team because how would I pay for my vision? And then everyone is so responsive. And then 
second would be how am I going to get enrolled in my courses? Is there is there like an automatic enrollment or do I have to register for myself just like what we do in traditional schools? But then they are going to answer everything for you. So um, I think the adjustment was really easy for me. Challenging at first, but um, easy because of the support and help of the next team. So mm -hmm. that's really good to hear, Lani. And you know what? Just to um, just to put you back on what Lani mentioned about the orientation, that's something that we really encourage learners to take before starting their courses because. Um, like like for Lani, she had to uh, like like you mentioned, you had to retake or um, go back to the orientation like five times, and um, it's really depend. It really depends on uh, your your uh, 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 on your learning pace, and uh, NXU will not rush you. That's something that is a very uh, very uh, something that's very interesting about NXU. We won't rush you in finishing the orientation. It's always open for you. But what we really want to encourage learners is to finish this because you know, finishing an orientation really um, ensures that you'll succeed in your next courses because the orientation includes all the information that you need, how to navigate the platform, how to submit assignments, where to find your professors, um, where to get support, or um, how will you be graded. Um, what is the rubric for the curriculum? Everything is there. So um, all the resources that you need to really succeed and how to go through your courses will be there. So um, just like Lani mentioned, towards the beginning, it's going to be a bit challenging. It's going to be a bit difficult. And that's normal. And that happens to everybody. And that, that doesn't happen just in online universities. I know that we've all had experiences with traditional universities. You know, you can't find where your room is. You don't know how your professor is. You know, you don't have to sub how to submit assignments. And it's all very common. And you have a community behind you. That's the very important thing. You have a community behind you to make sure that you um you will get where you want to go. Uh, achieving straight A's like Lani you know what she's been getting straight A's and I know that she's been getting support from uh, I, I know she is connected with some um, learners as well and we have uh, just like what Lani mentioned um, you get to interact with other learners within your course we every assignment uh, um, there will always be an assignment that will require um, engagement with learners so this is what you call the um, uh, the discussion boards, right? The discussion forums. So you're actually, and you will actually uh, engage with learners. So you won't feel that it's just you taking the course. You actually have classmates, right? Even though um, it is sort of like a mix of synchronous asynchronous learning. Okay. And um, okay, I know that people are raising their hand. So Angela Perkala, um, uh, I think you've raised your hand. Do you have a question for us right now? Um, I can um let me just go to you and okay i've now added you there if you have questions for us okay so if you don't um uh, for now um okay so let me just go back to um let me just go back to what i was saying so for now, if you have questions, you can just type it in the Q&A um, panel, and then we'll just go back to that later if you don't mind. Okay. So for now, um, I guess the last thing that we really want to know is about um, the skill focus. So meaning how was, um, how are learners able to apply the learnings that they've uh, received from NXU to their um, current um, fields, to their current work? So let me maybe start with um, Lani. So let me ask you, Lani, how are you able to apply what you've learned in your courses in your field of work? Okay, so um, what I do for my work is I, since I'm a finance business partner, I handle the finance side of business decisions and strategic decisions that we have to do for the local market here in the Philippines. And I'm, I'm an accountancy graduate, so technically I don't know anything about technology and marketing. But through the courses that I had here in Oxford University, I was able to learn a lot, especially first for marketing. My company is a real estate, global real estate. So 
it just started its business here in the Philippines December 2018. So the marketing is a global function. But I learned about the marketing that there are different things like localization. So applying the advertising and marketing to your local standards. So it was really helpful because I was not only able to do it in our business decisions, but I was able to share it with our marketing team and with our sales team, local sales team. And they were really able to apply it. Like for example, our global um, advertising, they did not do it in social media, but I said that here in the Philippines, everyone is using social media. So we have to do digital advertising in Facebook and Instagram, and it's really helpful for our company. And second would be, I think a, a lot about innovation. Um, we all know that how, COVID-19 hit the economy, but through the lessons that I have learned in Export, especially for innovation, product innovation, process innovation, most of the things that I have contributed in our company, um, the new product that we can launch to thrive in this COVID-19, I learned this everything in Export, like how to do it, how, how the organization is going to respond, and how are we going to deal with the response of the organization. And so far, all of the projects that we have raised um, they were very successful and it actually saved US dollars for our company. So I am really applying all of wow. the learnings that I have here in Export in our company and it's really helpful. So if you have doubts, just please, you can go and study here in Export University and it's really helpful. Thank you so much, Lani. And you know, it's really good to hear about, you know, um, how how uh, your learnings in NXU has helped you in your work. I'm really happy to hear that. And congratulations, by the way, on all of those successes. And, you know, uh, and how about for Zyreel? We really want to hear from you. Um, how has your learning, how has your learning journey helped in your career so far? Uh, you're on mute, Zyreel. We can't hear you. Um. Uh, it helped me to organize my dental team properly. It taught me how to have a mission, vision, and goals. And it also taught me on how to properly market my ano, dental clinic. Thank you. Thank you so much. And how about you, Alani? Because I know that um, we have a lot of learners. Uh, I know I have a lot of advice who has come to me and say that, hey, I have just been promoted from, you know, manager to director or even from uh, to a manager. And I'm very, very happy to hear those and not just here in the Philippines. And uh, it just goes to show that um, Nexford University works for, um, di works for different types of learners in different types of industries. So currently, we actually have a lot of um, uh, our biggest market right now is in Nigeria. However, we are really growing here in the Philippines. And we have a lot of learners here in the Philippines who are in the marketing industry. And I know that all of them have been um, very, um, very engaged to, uh, with the Nexford University. They even actually send us messages that, hey, you know what? I think this would be a good idea if you do this for Nexford. And, you know, it just really um, excites us to know that these learners are really uh, gaining skills and competencies that they even, you know, come to us and uh, to um, to uh, su provide suggestions. And we can really see that in the um, network, networkings that we usually have. So uh, right now, um, we have a lot of current learners here in this call. And I don't know if any of you are actually in the marketing field, but we do have a lot of learners there. And you can connect with each other. And that it's something that I really encourage uh, you guys to do. And anyway, um, Lani and Zyril, thank you so much for answering your questions. You know, before we head on to the Q&A, I just have a very quick announcement uh, and a very exciting news for everybody here in this call. By the, by the second quarter of 2021, we will be launching um, different learner communities and different learner competitions. So this wow. is something that we really want to engage learners. So we will have competitions related to marketing, we will have competitions related to operations and finance. So it's something that you can actually show off your talents and work with different uh, work with different nationalities and see how you play in the global workforce. And of course, you'll have you know different incentives for that as well. 
And the learning communities, uh, and you know what, this is something uh, I think this is my most favorite part that we'll have in 2021 is the learner communities. It's something uh, very common in traditional universities. The, um, uh, these are the organizations that you can join. Uh, in traditional universities, you have the student councils, you know, honor society, and you know, we're building this and we really want everybody to take part. And it's something that we want to instill in our learners that NXU, in NXU, even though we're online, you'll have that campus vibe. You'll still have that community with you. And I'm just very excited to announce this to all of you. So right now, I know um, a lot of learners have been sending in their queries um, and we'll be um, answering them right now. Okay, so I have a question right here um, from uh, Anonymous. I don't have IELTS yet. Can I still enroll in MBA courses? So the answer is yes. You can still enroll even if you don't have it yet. Um, the best thing to do is submit all of the requirements that you currently have. And then the admissions officer will give you a deadline on when your IELTS um, results would be needed. Um, okay, I hope I answered your question. So any, any, anything else from anyone? Question. Uh, I know someone sent a message earlier. Do we need to pay for each exam that we take? And I answered it. I said that there are no exam fees within the courses. Um, you don't have to pay for anything. You don't have to pay for resources. You don't have to pay for books. The only, um, the only fee that you have is your regular tuition fee. Thank you. Um, anyone else? I think um, Norman Aloba um, sent sent a message earlier that he has a question. Um, you can type in your question and we'll answer it for you. Mm -hmm. No? Okay. So while, you know, while everyone is thinking of questions, they need to, um, they need to ask us. Um, I'm just going to throw in some um frequently asked questions that we usually get during this call. So, for example, uh, one of those is how do... Um, okay, so Norman said the question is about IELTS. Okay, so that's good. And uh, the answer I gave you about IELTS earlier is not just for IELTS. If you have, um, if you have requirements and uh, let's say you have one or two missing, just submit the ones that you already have. And the admissions officer will work with you on a deadline when you can actually submit the missing ones. So, you know, just feel free to submit them uh, right away. And um, the admissions officer will call you and will set, you can set an appointment with them as well. Okay, uh, Jamie, if you don't mind um, adding the consultation page, booking page for the admissions officer to the Q&A panel right now so that Norman can actually set a consultation when he needs it and anyone else in this call as well, okay? Okay, so just going back, uh, one of the uh, frequently asked questions that we usually get during this call is how are, um, how, how, um, how are sessions, how do sessions go? So uh, like, for example, is it like classroom type, right? That a professor is there talking to you and um, there we have two, uh, there are two different um, scenarios. So you have live sessions and then we have recorded sessions. So for live sessions, this is scheduled. So learners uh, can choose from different live sessions that, uh, that are available in courses. So you can actually sit down and listen to your professors talking about the courses. So in this sorts of give you that synchronous feeling of um, online learning, right? And then the other one are recorded sessions. The recorded sessions, they are added in the um, announcements page in the courses, in the courses, uh, in the dashboard, so that you can actually revisit it anytime you want. And um, when it comes to the live sessions, those are also recorded and placed together with the recorded sessions, other recorded sessions. So you won't actually miss out. So for the current learners that we have right now, I really encourage everybody to not just um, read, the, read the lessons, not just do the assignments, but really view the recorded sessions because the assignments and the assignment instructions are detailed in the videos. You'll actually get a more insight on how, uh, how an assignment would go 
or how a topic would actually be when you go to the sessions. Okay? And um, another question that we usually get is, do we, can we have one-on-one -on -one sessions with our professors? And the answer is yes. So in the dashboard, in the actual courses, we have um, booking pages for the faculty. You can just simply book a session that is um, in that is found in, that, that, that with the schedule that is available for you and the professor that you want to meet. And then you can have a consultation. So in the consultation, you can actually ask your professors how um, to confirm your learning. So for example, you read the articles, you read the videos, but you're not sure if how you understood it is correct. So you can go to your professor and say, hey, um, hey, Dr. Um, Dr. Cornelis, is this really um, how the topic goes? Is, this, uh, is my understanding correct? Should accounting really be done this way? Should it be this way? So this, uh, you have the opportunity to have that specialized or, or personalized uh, rather learning with your professors. Okay? Um, okay, I'm just looking at um, other questions from learners. Okay, great. So I've talked about um, the online learning experience. I've talked about the faculty, but let me just um, maybe lastly, before we close all of this, um, one of the most frequently asked questions regarding um, regarding uh, what do we call this um, graduation or credentials is uh, just like I mentioned earlier in the stackable credentials you get certificates as you go along the program and uh, you can actually choose to get a hard copy or just an electronic copy so it's usually something that uh, learners ask us and it's in the um, and NXU is um, known in of course in the US the UK and um, uh, um, what to call this employers here in the Philippines, especially international ones, they recognize um, the NXU degree that it's something that we really value and something that I would say is something uh, that most learners or even prospect learners are looking for. Because I know most Filipinos were really into, you know, going to the big four universities, having that credential in. But you know what? Having that American degree in your program, knowing that you, you were with international professors, international um, uh, communities would give you that edge that you actually can work in the global workforce. And that's something that I'm really very proud of for NXD. Okay. So I, I know that um, we're just, you know, 10 minutes away from uh, from this call, uh, from this webinar, I mean. And I just want to share my screen very uh, last, lastly, and just to show you um, the contact details that you can uh, reach out to when you have questions. So for those of you who are here, who are prospect learners, and you're interested to um, to know more about how you can um, apply, how you can enroll, here is the email address that you can connect to, help at nextword.org. Let's just send them a message for those who have queries about their, um, those who have queries about their um, requirements, just send a message there. And for those, of, for those of you who are current learners, we really want you to stay engaged. And so reach out to your professors and success advisors. So here is our email address, success at nextword.org. We want you to stay in touch. You can also connect with us in our, we have a Facebook meet, um, Facebook account, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube um, to stay connected with all of the new announcements that uh, Annex you have. As you know, you just keep in touch with our all of our social media page. And um, you know what? Um, uh, we're very happy to announce that, you know, uh, Yesterday, actually February 1, we celebrated our anniversary. It's a really big milestone for us. So there are, there are a lot of um, incentives flying around. So you can just really jump in and see what we can offer for you guys. Okay. So thank you so much, everyone who's been here. And um, I just want to um, turn over the mic to Lani and Zyril first. If you have any more um, last questions for our last remarks for everyone here in the audience. Uh, how about you, Lani? Okay, so um, I think just want to let anyone know that Nextford University is really flexible as much as you want to stretch. So in terms of 
the time and in terms of the financial capacity that everyone has. And in case you're wondering, um, you can take one course for each term, which is two months or two courses or three courses, any as much as you can. So I think um, it will be really helpful and it's advisable for everyone to take MBA and next board as a personal experience so that's all for me and if you need anything like discuss personally you can reach me a linkedin account that's all thank you everyone thank you lani how about you zyro mm -hmm. for me um next for university is very mobile friendly so if you're a busy person you can still manage to have your master's degree um while while commuting, you can still um, read the modules and maybe watch the videos. That's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, right. And I know you're on your phone now, right, Zyro? So it's very, very flexible and it's very handy. You can, it's really on the go. So it's really something that um, busy people would really appreciate because we're very flexible. And how about you, Jamie? Any last words for our current learners? You know, reminders, you know, reminders of deadline for current learners and words for our prospect learners as well? Okay, so for the current learners, uh, we're just happy that you have chosen Nextport and I hope we're able to, uh, to really provide you with the support that you need. And as Trisha mentioned, we're just uh, an email away, actually just a booking, a click in the bookings page away. We cater to learners 24-7. That's something that we're very proud of. If you have concerns any time of the day, you can reach out to our team and someone from our team will be there to assist you and provide assistance just the time that you need it. So for the prospect learners once you enroll we will be very happy to provide you um, of course the support that you need not just of course during the orientation but throughout your next for learning journey so i hope you will be you will be enrolling with us and we're, we'll be very happy to welcome you with uh, of course open arms to next for university thank you Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. And, you know, very lastly, for everybody, again, thank you so much for being here with us. And it was lovely, you know, playing with you guys, you know, just getting to know where you've been throughout this pandemic and just really connecting is a really good um, and sort of a relief, right, being on a lockdown. So I hope you also um, join us in the um, succeeding succeeding um, events, you know, that we'll have. Uh, we'll have more, just like I mentioned, we'll have learner competitions, learner communities. So please stay engaged. For prospect learners here, we really want to have you and um, you've heard from a lot, from our current learners, their experiences. If it's something that um, would fit your current um, stage in life, your current um, academic goals or career goals, um, don't hesitate to just reach out to us. Again, the, um, the contact detail is help at nextford.org. And for our current learners, connect with your success advisors, please. We want you to um, engage with us. And uh, for all of those who won during the um, game, um, we have your names. We'll be reaching out to you. We'll be sending you your merch. Jethro sent a message. You know, Jethro is one of our NXE ambassadors. So, you know, uh, Jethro will connect with you if you have a merch. But, you know, we'll see. You should have, you know, you should have really um, participated in the game and, um, you know, typed in faster than the others. <laughs> but, you know, thank you so much, Jetro, because I know you're always here with us. And yeah, that's right. Happy second anniversary to NXE. So again, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much, everybody, um, for joining. Um, see you again in the next uh, webinars. Thank you so much. Bye. Have thank a nice you, day. Everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.